how do you install solar panels on the roof of your van and wire them in the most efficient way for the charge controller to produce the most amount of power? How many panels do you need and what gauge do you use where? And then I'll show you some actual test footage at the end of the video. Let's get into it. I wanted to find some much more high quality solar panels for this new van this time, so I went online to research. The best panels on the market at the moment, Class A rated monocrystalline with efficiency ratings over 21%. Class A panels mean they just don't have any defects or micro cracks. You want to get a white or silver frame because the black frames allow the panels to overheat too easily, which lowers their output. Do your own research, but I decided to go with the 9BB Bouge RV 200 watt panels when I looked online. 9BB just means that they fit more cell receiving surface on the panel itself, making the panels 8% smaller than they would have otherwise. I chose these because they have a higher efficiency rating than almost any of the panels that I've seen at 22.8%. And the price is about $30 to $40 lower than most others in the same tier. And four of them will fit perfectly on my transit roof, leaving room for the fan in the middle still. It's a funny story. So I decided to purchase these panels on my next paycheck myself. A week later, Bouge RV actually reached out to my channel and asked to sponsor me with the battery product of theirs. I didn't care about that. I instead asked if they would sponsor me with these solar panels that I wanted. So just so you know, I was definitely going to get these panels anyway with or without this sponsorship. First of all, I'm not just gonna put some random panels on my own dream van that is supposed to have unlimited energy at all times, just because I got a sponsorship. So unboxing, most negative reviews online come from multiple solar panel companies that are about damage during the shipping process. So I saw that in this box, these had thick foam panels covering the corners and a thick cardboard covering the panel itself. So I was personally happy with this packaging. I saw no damage to any of the four panels. So let's go over the solar install now. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna have this solar charge controller and the battery already set up. My next video will show how to set those up. So we have four solar panels total. Each one is 20 volts at 10 amps, and each one is also 200 watts. So these two up top, they're connected in series, which is positive to negative. These two on the bottom, they are connected in series as well, which is positive to negative. These top and the bottom, these are connected in parallel on both sides. So this is positive to positive, and this one comes in negative to negative. These things right here are Y-split connections, which allow two connections to come together and then one out. So this one comes over here now, and this wire is the positive into the solar charge controller, and this wire is the negative into the solar charge controller. Since this is a series connection, series wiring doubles voltage but keeps amps the same. So that's 20 plus 20 volts, and that's 10 the same. Same thing for the bottom, 40 volts and 10 amps. So now when we take the top series and the bottom series and connect them both in parallel with the positives and the negatives, now right here we're dealing with the same voltage but double the amperage because parallel wiring doubles amperage. We still have 800 watts total because when you multiply your voltage times amperage, 40 times 20 equals 800. Now the reason why you would want to wire it this way is because you want to get the voltage up high enough to make the solar charge controller be able to produce enough power. So it's not just the amperage that you're bringing in that's going into your battery, it's also converting the voltage. And if the voltage is high enough, then the solar charge controller is more efficient. So you could technically wire all these in series as well to get the voltage up to 80 and leave the amperage at 10. This could also work, but I wanted to do series parallel because there are also benefits to having them wired in parallel. If one side is in the shade, the other side still works just fine. If they're all in series and you cover one up, they're all going to suffer just a little bit more. 
Nothing above here is ever going to be pushing more than 20 amps into the solar charge controller. So now when we're picking our wire size, we need to make sure that our wire size can handle the amperage. 10 gauge wire can handle 30 amps. So I went with 10 gauge for the entire top portion. Using wire good enough for only 20 amps could actually melt or catch fire on an extremely sunny day since more than 20 amps is technically possible. You should always slightly oversize the wires in your panel system because these panels can actually produce more power than they are rated for. Now to start, you want to test each panel for its voltage. So we're going to bring each panel out there to the outside and to the sun. Uh, the solar panels in the sun. Put the positive on the positive, the negative in the negative. And this one is reading 20 volts. So this one seems good. So now that I know they're all producing about the exact same voltage, I can now start the install. Lay your panels out the way they'll be on the roof. You're going to install your Z brackets right over those holes on the side using these screws. Put the washer on the bolt, the bolt on the Z bracket, then the lock washer and the nut, and then tighten it all down. Get your Dicor butyl tape and put it on the bottom of each Z bracket so you can slide it around on the top of the van without damaging the metal or paint. Keep the film on for now so you'll be able to slide it around. Clean and wipe off your entire roof before putting any of the panels up top. Now get all your solar panels up top and just look at the fit. Look at each Z bracket and see if they fit in between. Mine needed to be changed so I had to screw them at different areas. The two front sides needed to both be moved backwards a little bit, so it would be on a flat ground. Every Z bracket in the middle had to be in a zigzag pattern so they wouldn't hit each other because the van wasn't wide enough side to side to fit them. Now you wanna put your solar panels back on the roof and make sure they all fit properly. If not, then move the Z brackets around again. Why did I choose Z brackets? Because I'm a stealth van lifer. Anything I can do to get my panels lower down to my roof while still having a gap below for air cooling. Eventually, I'll put side rails up so people at ground level will not be able to see the panels or the roof fan. It'll remain a plain white van with a roof rack. Have another person help you put the solar panels up top so you don't drop them while moving up the ladder. And go ahead and place them as closely as possible to where they're finally going to go. <laughs> Remember to keep that butyl tape covered. You see right here as we slide them around. Make sure you're routing the wires at least where they need to go so they don't get stuck underneath the panels. All right. Do a final walk around the van just to make sure you like the way it looks. At this point, you can start peeling that tape off and go ahead and stick the solar panels down onto the van metal itself. Go ahead and connect the positive and negative underneath both sets of panels. For the parallel wiring, keep the positive and positive and negative and negative open still. Next, use a drill that's just smaller than the screws you're going to use. Here, you're going to communicate with your partner down below as you screw into the wood piece that they are holding. I'm gonna put the other one in now. It gives it extra structure so you don't strip anything out, especially the metal of the van. All the way through. Yep. This is how we're gonna get the cords down through the roof. Notice that I put the butyl tape around the bottom so then I can put it down and unpeel the sticker when I'm ready. I got a one inch hole saw for the roof to put the wires through. Since the middle of the fan is going right about there, we're going to put this thing over on the side, faced for less wind resistance. Go ahead and cut your roof hole and then spray it over with some white paint. Make sure that it's corrosion proof paint like Rust-Oleum. Next, you'll need to connect the panels to your solar charge controller. You could buy pre-made MC4 wire or you can follow along with me and let's make our own. The reason you would want to make your own is if you want to make the wire fit perfectly between components on your roof with the size and type of wire you pick yourself. Use at least PV rated wire in direct sunlight or weather. Honestly, this is really easy to do. Just watch. MC4 connector, release them. This tool, this is the male, this is the female, the negative. These are the two crimping pieces for the wire. This is the male and this is the female. A good way to know which one these go to. Male goes to the opposite. The female one goes into the male one right here. Now I'm using 10 gauge, so I'm putting it into the 10 gauge stripper. We're gonna strip our wire again about a half inch right there. Twist it around, make sure you cut it all the way and then pull it off like that. Now I have the Bujar V crimper. 
This one is 14 gauge, that's 12 gauge, and this one's 10 gauge. I'm using 10 gauge. Don't push all the way down, but make sure it's up in there. Put the wire inside of it, and then go ahead and crimp it. That is solid right there. This can just go all the way through, honestly. Do it until you hear the sound. Tighten it all the way up, and that's done for the male side. To determine the wire length, just push this through first. A good bit, just so you have room. Route the wire where it's going to go, and this is exactly where it's gonna go. I'll cut it about a foot or two down, right there. The female and the males can have sex with each other. Boom, so this can go on here now. This is now fed down into here. And these are the three screws that it came with. These need to be tightened all the way. And now all that's left to do is just put some of the caulking on here. Lap sealant self-leveling. And you're just gonna put it around where the uh, screws are. Make sure you know which one is positive and which one's negative. Make sure you get the right size grommet to go in the hole up here. If the rubber wears off on the outside of the wire, it can cause a fire. It's basically gonna cause a short because this metal is ground in the electrical system. So it's gonna short out and it's gonna cause a fire. Remember each one was saying it was 20 volts before each panel. Now they should be doubled since it was doubled once with the series parallel. It says it's 36, which is fine because it's actually not that sunny out right now. If the sun was fully out, this would be 40. If you wanted to right now, you could just attach these directly. This one to the positive, this one to the negative, and it would work fine, you'd be good. But I'm not gonna do that. I want to put this in between still, a switch so I can cut off my solar panel if I need to do any maintenance. RVs do not necessarily need to adhere to any solar code, but if you want to and also make your system the safest it can be, install a two pole breaker instead of this one pole switch. Remember guys, always switch on your battery first before the solar. Let's do it. And there we go. The solar is coming in, the current still zero. That'll change here in a second, it should. There we go. Not the sunniest day, but we're still getting almost 600 watts. Notice the shadow of the van in the background. As it goes away, you see the power decrease. Still taking at about seven amps and pushing 15 amps into the battery at this point, the most I've seen so far is 45 amps, which is honestly way more than I thought I would get. So I'm extremely happy with these Bouge RV panels. How many panels do you need? First, you'll need to measure what will actually fit on your roof. You could just fill your roof with as much solar as you can fit and chance it. Otherwise, you'll need to calculate some things. Look at the labels of each appliance you'll be using to find their watts rating. Once you have the power consumption of all the devices in watts, you'll need to determine how long in hours you typically use each device per day. Once you know the appliance's power draw and usage time, you multiply them to get watt hours. Now size your panel system accordingly. If you use 1000 watts a day, you'll need at least a 200 watt panel to keep up. If you use 5000 watts a day, you'll need at least 1000 watts of panels to keep up. This is extremely averaged out for the amount of good sunlight you have per day, about five hours worth. If none of this makes sense to you and you just want a magic number, watch my first electronics video where I give about 10 different real world examples you can just copy. In a future video, I'll link it right here if it's not up already. I'll talk about how to size your solar charge controller without having to do any math yourself and how to hook up every single wire and device in your van's electrical system. If you made it to the end, tell me in a comment because I read them all. And remember to subscribe and share with someone who's currently needing this info. And I'll see you in my next video, guys. Peace.